Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another The Sports Scoop video. Today, we are continuing the off-season move series, and we are doing the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you guys are new to the series, it is where we talk about each NFL team and what they should do in the offseason. Today, we're doing the Jaguars. We're going to talk about players they should cut slash release in free agency, players they should re-sign on their roster, players that they should target in free agency and sign in free agency, and as well, players that they should target in the NFL draft. Obviously, it will most likely be Trevor Lawrence at pick one, but we're still going to give you guys some targets. If you guys do enjoy that kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe. Helps means the absolute world. And uh, yeah. So the Jacksonville Jaguars have approximately $82 million in cap, the most in the NFL. So there's a lot to work with, but as always, you still want to get rid of the um, dead wood just so you can get free up all the money. We don't have many cuts, only one, and that is Tyler Eifert, the tight end. Tyler Eifert, he has a $6.35 million cap hit, and honestly, I think he's, he isn't bad, but he's not enough to warrant that cap hit. I think he has, a, he has struggled with injuries all um, for a lot of his career. He really like, hasn't just been very productive for the team, and I think tight end is very strong in this draft class, which is a position that could really easily be addressed. So that gives them even more money worth it for Jacksonville to cut Tyler Eifert. That's our only cut, but I think it makes sense for them. Yeah, I agree. I think Tyler Eifert has been amazing. Obviously, we have some targets in the draft that will be tight ends and, uh, you know, get as much money as you can, especially with a young quarterback coming in. So let's get on to players that they're going to release. Obviously, this isn't players that they're cutting and saving money from. It's players they're just simply letting go to free agency. Some hot takes here. I'm not going to go through and analyze each one. We're going to release Cam Robinson, the offensive tackle, Chris Conley, the wide receiver, D.D. Westbrook, the wide receiver, and, and Tyler Shatley, the offensive guard. The Jacksonville Jaguars have the most money in the NFL, which is really in their favor. Obviously, they were the worst team in the NFL, arguably, um, you know, either them or the Jets. Let's talk about some re-signings players they should bring back. Number one might be a bit of a hot take-ish. We're going to go with Keelan Cole on a two-year, $12 million deal. A good wide receiver, three wide receiver, four option. Obviously, the Jaguars have a lot of draft pick and a lot of, uh, you know, capital in free agency so they can go out and get other receivers keelan cole i feel like has been good we've seen him make some circus catches notably that one on the sideline that one-handed grab against the patriots you know obviously i said good very good catches deep threat and kind of a receiver that's good all over the field short routes deep routes adjustable throughout the offense and kind of gives an edge for trevor lawrence another weapon on the offensive side of the ball so we're going to give keelan cole that two-year contract next we're signing sydney jones a cornerback for the jaguars for a three-year 17 million dollar deal i think sydney jones had these young and i think he had his really his best season in jacksonville despite that terrible secondary did get injured as again many of the other jaguars uh, defense really suffered from the injury bug but he had a very decent season probably the best of his career i think he still has a lot of time to improve and I think he can be a very quality cornerback number two for Jacksonville. You need some experience there if you're bringing a lot of new guys in that secondary position, especially because they need to improve. But I think Sidney Jones is one they can keep around, especially considering he still has a lot of time to develop. All right, let's get on to another secondary signing. I feel like they're retaining Sidney Jones and then here Josh Jones, the safety on a three-year $15.5 million contract. Josh Jones, who had some show out plays last season, I did like him. Very good, hard-hitting safety. He has speed to get around the field. Obviously, right now with a poor secondary with money, I feel like retaining the slight talent, I wouldn't know if you would call those two talent. I think they're still good players. Uh, retain the talent that flashed out last season. As well, he's only 26 years old, so for a cheap contract, you know, it's not that much. The Jaguars have money. Josh Jones, good safety. I mean, I feel like one of the better secondary uh, players for them last year. You can go and get others in the draft, free agency, and I think he's a good good role player for them. All right, Surridge, we love to see this. Let's get on to free agent signings, possibly the most fun part about planning out these videos for you guys. So, the Jaguars one is kind of a disaster for us. We have postponed these videos for about two weeks, I would say. Um, and we had them signing Justin Simmons, got franchise tagged, Brandon Scherf, who got franchise tagged. We kind of record the video. And Surge, if we think about it right now, we kind of record the video at the good time because now we really know who they can't get because it would have been posting two players automatically. But those players are franchise tagged. I don't like that. I don't like the franchise tag, but that's for another video. So we have two free agent signings for them. We've cut down the list a bit, but we're going to continue with Kenny Galladay on a four-year, $77 million contract. Obviously, Allen Robinson was franchise tag, Chris Godwin's franchise tag. So basically, Kenny Galladay is the best receiver on the market for them. 
I had I had him going to the Giants, our first offseason moves video, but I still think he's a very, very good, amazing, young, uh, talented receiver. Will leave the Lions because they do not plan on franchise tagging, and I really don't think he has a reason to be there, kind of that new system coming in with Goff and their new head coach. A uh, big target for Trevor Lawrence can be that true, true wide receiver one, and right now he's technically in his prime at 27. I think Kenny Galladay would be a great, great signing for the – uh, Jacksonville Jaguars again you have Trevor Lawrence you need him get him that number one wide receiver I think Kenny Galladay definitely fits that we saw his skill set in Detroit but no offense to the Lions I don't see any reason why he would stick around there and I think Jacksonville is a very appealing destination they have the first pick likely he's on Trevor Lawrence they have a lot of cap space to bring in more talent they have a new coaching staff and I think again Trevor Lawrence, he needs, he, he's going in Jacksonville. There is talent at wide receiver, but they don't have that true number one guy. I think that is exactly what Kenny Galladay pr provides, and I think he deserves to be that uh, top free agent signing for them. Free agent signing number two in place of Brandon Scherf and arguably the better offensive lineman. We have Joe Tooney, the offensive guard from the Patriots, on a four year, $56 million contract. So we have him basically exactly around the range he's projected out about 14.25 million dollars a year a bit less obviously i'm more i like thuni more than sheriff but simply we had thuni go to my uh cincinnati bengals video which i did go check that out it's almost at a thousand views and still only 28 so technically he has a lot of time for an offensive lineman you give him four years until he's 32 and i think he can still be very good as well you have a young quarterback who's going to be trevor lawrence you need to get in protection an offensive line that was very you know not good at all and i think you have a division where there's up and coming pass rushers obviously you have the colts in that division you need to be able to pass block we don't want what happened to joe burrow happened to trevor lawrence you want to keep him healthy for the 2021 season i think thune he's a great inside offensive lineman who can uh, protect lawrence for the future what a lot of general managers and head coaches get wrong with rookie quarterbacks is that the first thing they do is get them weapons you have to build from the inside out you have to start with the offensive line make sure your rookie is protected and i think that's what the jaguars will do joe tooney again he's probably maybe the best guard in this class i mean close between ham sheriff and not sure if anymore but lindsley mm -hmm. i think he is I, I think he's destined to leave free agency especially considering the patriots did trade back for Trent Brown and will likely be not not likely not tagging Joe Tooney. So I think if he's available, which it seems like he will be, I think Jacksonville's a great landing spot for him. He can uh, pair well with the other guard, Andrew Norwell, and Trevor Lawrence will have a much better pocket to throw from. So I think it makes sense here, all the sense of the world to get, get Joe Tooney. And this is probably the most realistic, or this is the team it would most likely go to in terms of money because they have the most money in the NFL and can offer the biggest contract. So I would assume they probably would offer more than $56 because there will be a large market for them. You know, the Jets, the Bengals, teams with a lot of money and young quarterbacks. But I think the, the Jaguars probably have the best chance. All right, let's get in to draft. Obviously, this is where we analyze each pick they have. We're analyzing four picks, so we're going to give – about uh, two options for one of the picks. Couple, you know, we're gonna give you guys some some variety of what they should go. Let's go to pick number one. You, you know, we're not gonna not gonna talk much. They're gonna take Trevor Lawrence out of Clemson, one of the best quarterbacks we've seen since Peyton Manning. Andrew Luck has all the tools in the world to be an amazing quarterback. If he's gonna the next quarter, the next great quarterback, I don't doubt will be him. And I think he'll be amazing. No hate to Mahomes. I think Trevor Lawrence will be an absolutely phenomenal quarterback if you can build from the inside out and get him weapons. There is no argument here. If they don't take him, I will quit uh, this YouTube channel. I will delete everything um, because you, if you're Urban Meyer, oh Justin Fields, Ohio State. No. You take Trevor Lawrence, you're safe. You, you know, you know, you build your franchise around him. Trevor Lawrence does seem to be a slam dunk pick. Although we are getting a little bit more momentum that. Some teams actually reportedly have Zach Wilson as their QB number one. Mm -hmm. However, I think that will blow over by draft day. I think Trevor Lawrence, they have to take him at number one. Don't get me wrong. Zach Wilson's a great prospect that I've been very high so on. So just saying that because he wants to jet stay. <laughs> exactly. True, 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 though. I mean, I think in most years he would go number one overall, I think. But I still think that mm -hmm. Trevor Lawrence at this point, he's the generational talent. I think he's got to go first overall. All right, pick 25. We're going to go two options here. Number one, and this is assuming, and even maybe not assuming, assuming they either don't get Galladay or Keelan Cole 
uh, or they just don't have that wide receiver one going to the season, or at least by draft time, they go with Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota. If you guys have been following the channel, Surridge knows watching some of our draft content, I absolutely love Rashad Bateman. Really weird 2020 story. Opted in, opted out, opted in, opted out. You know, kind of was in and out of the, didn't really play much. Incredible route runner, talented in the air, in the red zone. I think an absolute target. And if, if there's anything, I mean, he's kind of that Justin Jefferson like comparison. He has incredible footwork, incredible route running skills. And I think he can be a really, really talented receiver, if not the best receiver in this class. And I think it's that kind of story where it's like the Jerry Judy and the Henry Ruggs uh, in this draft. So I was going to be Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith. I think Bateman's the sleeper like Justin Jefferson was last year. And I think he can be incredibly productive with Trevor Lawrence. So I think that should be their one of their targets at their later first round pick. Now for our second option for the 25th pick, this is the one I thought I think will be a great pick for Jacksonville. Liam Eichenberg from Notre Dame. I really like this guy just because I feel like he's the most pro-ready tackle in the draft, maybe other than Penny Sewell. But I think Eichenberg, he played full four seasons at Notre Dame. He was very good, very solid in protection. I think that's, again, I, I'll reiterate this multiple times. You need to make sure that your franchise quarterback is protected. I think Liam Eichenberg isn't a flashy pick like Bateman, but he's a safe, reliable option to protect um, – Lawrence's blind side and with us letting go Cam Robinson free agency coming off at 20 ACL. I think um, Mike Chipper would be a really good pick for Jacksonville here. All right, let's get on to their second round picks. Obviously, the Jacksonville Jaguars have a you know plethora of picks. They have so many. Um, and pick 33, Pat Fairmouth, the tight end from Penn State. Someone who I've been watching a bit. I do like him. I feel like it's kind of Kyle Pitts and the drop off from tight ends is huge. Um, but can play on the line or out wide. Great hands, great in the air. Obviously, with the best tight end being Kyle Pitts, he's not really a tight end. I don't really think you can fit him in that mold. He's kind of a receiver. So arguably, Fairmouth is the best, you know, tight end, like like identified as a tight end, not a receiver in the class. And I think it's a steal in the second round. Obviously, he can be, a, again, you build on that offensive line if you take Eichenberger 33 or Eichenberg could even be available here if you go Bateman. I think they really have so much flexibility and fair moves would be a very, very good value pick for this Jaguar scene. Now going on to our 46th overall draft pick, our final pick for the Jaguars. We only do first two rounds. And I have, a stake, I have um, the Jaguars taking Javon Holland. And I think really, again, another pick to me that makes sense, mainly because Jacksonville secondary was just atrocious um, last year. And I think a lot of that has to go down to really the deterioration of the safety. I know their cornerbacks, they're, they aren't terrible. I think CJ Henderson and Sidney Jones do show potential, but I think the safety pick has to be, safety has to be sorted out. Again, originally we did have Justin Simmons before he got franchise tagged. And I think Javon Holland is maybe the best cover safety in this class. And I think he'll, again, do wonders for a secondary that really needs to rebound. I think he's, a, again, the best free safety in this draft class to me is him. We saw him get a lot of hype uh, towards the beginning of yeah. the um, draft cycle where we're, where we're scouting 2021 guys. He really fell off, but I still think he's safety number free safety number one in this class, and that's why I think he'd be a great pick for the Jaguars at 46. Well, that will do it for our video. Hope you guys enjoyed. That was a very fun one to uh, plan out. Obviously, we got it to you guys a bit late, but nevertheless, we got it to you guys. So make sure to comment down below uh, what you guys think. Who do you think the Jaguars should take free agency? All that stuff. What do you guys think? What are your opinions on this? You guys seem to very much like these. Our Bengals one and our uh, Colts one have done very well. So we're going to keep going with these videos. Obviously, we said we're going to do all the teams. We're trying to get the ones with the most money, with the teams that can do the most moves in the offseason so we have more content. But again, we are continuing to push out videos so we should have hopefully some more these videos are just a bit harder to kind of execute uh as well make sure to like subscribe if you did enjoy we are a small channel so all subscriptions uh you know mean the world to us um so yeah you know make sure to support us or go check down below if you have subscribed turn on notifications so you don't miss another off-season video all our socials are linked down below our instagram our podcast our website as well as our second channel which we don't really post that much on we try and post clips for you but mainly if you want to stay in contact with us go follow our instagram the underscore sports underscore scoop we're incredibly active over there we post breaking news all that and you can always dm us if you have a question about the video if you're new anything like that uh thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you in the next one